good morning everyone today we can discuss about worms and viruses in detail first one we have types of viruses actually this viruses will affect different subsystem on the host computers and software but uh, after analyzing whether they reside in binary executable file or in data files or in boot boot sector of the host hard drive we can classify the virus so uh, we have two types of viruses based on their reside uh, one is memory resident virus and another one is non memory resident virus memory resident virus means uh, it actually install itself uh, as a part of operating system when executed after which it remains in ram uh, from the time of the from the time the computer is booted up to when it is shut down so this uh, resident viruses will override the encrypt handling uh, functions and other functions uh, whenever the os is attempting to access a particular target file or disk sector this virus virus code definitely affect this target file that is actually memory resident virus in contrast we have a non memory resident virus or it is otherwise known as non resident virus when executed it uh, scans the disk for targets and infects them and they, uh, then exist okay it does not remain in memory when it is done executing but it affects the target file but it do it doesn't uh, re reside in a memory so these are the classifications based on uh, the viruses which they reside okay if it is reside in a binary executable file or in a data file or in a boot sector so we can have the classification that a memory resident virus as well as a non resident virus a memory resident virus means a virus that is reside in a memory or it will uh, uh, directly affect the operating system uh, when uh, this os is attempting to access another target i mean another file definitely this virus will affect that file okay then other classification macro virus is one of the virus it uh, mainly affects some uh, applications like microsoft outlook microsoft word etc they allow macro programs to be embedded in documents or email so that the uh program may be run automatically when the document is open so actually a macro virus which will uh, directly affect this type of documents whenever this documents uh, are opened it will run automatically okay so a macro virus is a virus that is written in macro language and embedded into these documents so that when user opens a file the virus code is executed and in and also it can affect the or infect the user's computer that is actually macro virus that is a virus that is uh, written in macro language and which is embedded into the uh, documents like microsoft word outlook etc okay whenever we are attempting to open these files it will directly infect the file and other files also next one is boot sector virus uh it uh, specifically target the boot sector or the master boot record mpr of host hard drive or remove removable storage media like floppy uh, flash drives etc so one classification is we can uh, classify the virus into non resident virus and resident virus also we have macro virus and boot sector virus also we have email virus actually um, name itself shows that it is spread through the email uh, a virus that intentionally rather than accidentally uses the email system to spread okay while uh, virus infected files may be accidentally uh, sent as email attachment it will definitely affects the other systems too okay melisa virus which is a uh, email virus which send mails with word attachment uh it sends itself to everyone on the mail list in a email package it strengthens it it uh, strengthens the propagation phase of viruses okay so email virus which definitely affects the email system 
if it is a boot sector uh, we have uh, macro virus boot sector virus uh, email virus uh, they are the examples of the viruses if uh, if if a boot boot sector virus um infects what all types of uh, files it will affect uh, master boot record and it contains a code that runs when the system starts up uh, it also affect um, volume boot record and it affects uh, oers multi stage bootstrap loader etc okay also we have uh, file infector infectors a virus that affects some or infects some files so virus infects executable files also virus is placed in executable file uh, we have preventing a virus and appending virus already we had discussed preventing virus means the virus which will uh, attach to the beginning of a document or a file appending virus at the end we can um, have the virus code to a file it changes the name of target file um, it has um, actually this virus placed in earlier in the search path and it uh, you change the interpreter in ELA files etc so if the wire uh, virus uh, which will affects the boot sector ac uh, actually it affects the oers loader etc or mbr and volume boot record etc if the uh, virus is a file infector it, uh, it will affect directly to the data files or executable files Uh, we have preventing virus and appending viruses to affect the files next we have worms a worm uh, that can run independently but virus cannot run independently there is that needs a host to uh, run but a worm it can it's a program it can uh, run independently that can propagate a complete working version of itself onto the other host on a network and actually uh, it's a self replicating program and that will propagate over internet by using email and by using remote execution capability also uh, by using remote launching and by using a launching system uh, that means to do, by using a launch of ddos and uh, uh, it can access to sensitive information and uh, it can spread this uh, disinformation etc so worm which is a program which can run independently which can propagate over the internet by using email remote access uh, capability and remote login and uh, how to fix a worm characteristics by using some important attribute we have four important attributes to fix the worm characteristics uh enhanced targeting enhanced speed enhanced capability and enhanced uh, destructive power so these are the four attribute uh to uh fix a worm characteristic first one enhanced targeting uh actually worms that spread through email have an easy way to figure out their targets because um uh, all they need to do is look into their victims mailbox or email address book to find a set of targets okay if it affects if it's spread through a email uh, by using victims mailbox or email address log book or book to find a set of targets also it can affect the all the uh, set of targets uh if it is a mobile worm uh, it contains phone numbers of uh, its potential victims from the phone book uh, so by using uh, the phone book and it can set as targets to infect them and some uh, some web web worms uh, use the search engines to harvest uh, urls of potentially vulnerable targets that is actually enhanced targeting that means it can enhance the targeting if it affects only one target from one targets email log book or it, uh, from phone book of the target we can enhance or the worm can enhance the targeting capability and enhance the speed means uh, to enhance the infection rate some worms are designed to spawn multiple threats that means some worms have multiple threats to enhance the infection rate actually for that uh, 
each thread is responsible for setting up a connection to different subset of uh, host okay if we have a multiple threads in our work each thread has a capability to setting up to infect a set of targets okay so some worms reduce this infection latency by targeting a buffer overflow also it can use some udp technology uh, to spread the infection or to uh, increase the infection rate so a steep increasing in uh, number of infected machines at a very onset of worm epidemic has a multiplicative effect on spreading rate for this purpose uh, the attacker could create one or more hit list carrying addresses of several thousands of vulnerable machines to spread the worm also it has an enhanced capabilities that is most worms have unique and distinct signature signature means a, a, a uh, pattern of bits actually these signatures are the key to detect them so um, one such technique is to use uh, some encryption technology uh, for disguising a uh, worm code uh, and different instances of the worm may use different key for encryption and if uh, some keys that are used uh, encryption for making a signature of the worm it is they are known as polymorphic uh, worms but uh, worms that have multiple versions with or without relying on encryption are referred to as metamorphic worms so for enhancing capability they can use some encryption technology like uh, uh, doing in polymorphic worms okay so these are uh, this is a third uh, attribute which uh, definitely specify the worm characteristics and the fourth one is enhanced destructive power like a witty worm is the first worm to carry a destructive payload and it deleted a random section of the victim's hard disk leading to system crash and it is very uh, if uh, a worm with an enhanced destructive power uh, contains a fast spreading uh, rate and these worms not just destructive power measured by downtime and lost productivity and system crashes there are more uh, sinister uh, and subtle goals such as stealing of sensitive personal and corporate information which could remain undetected so there are four main attributes which uh, is used for uh, setting a worm characteristics that is enhanced targeting enhanced capability enhanced speed and enhanced destructive power and the worm uh, which has four phases like uh, virus dormant phase propagation phase triggering phase and execution phase in uh, dormant phase the worm is ideal and waiting for the trigger to event uh, trigger event and in the propagation phase worm searches for other systems connects to it and copies itself to it and run uh, runs and the third phase for the worm operation is a triggering phase worm activated by some trigger event to perform intended function and the fourth phase is execution phase the intended function is performed like a uh, denial of a uh, service attack on a specified task so a worm operation has a four phases like a virus it has dormant phase propagation phase triggering phase and execution phase dormant phase is ideal phase actually the worms are waiting for the trigger event trigger event means maybe it's a date or a time or a program and the second phase is a propagation phase actually it search for other system and connects to it copies itself it to to it and runs and the third phase is triggering phase actually worm is activated by some trigger event like date time etc and the fourth phase is the actual execution phase or the actual function that is to be performed at this phase like a denial of service attack one of the main type of a worm is a morris worm it is the oldest worm actually it affects like 4000 to 60000 host within a 16 hours of the worms de deployment and to propagate this worms first task was to discover other host 
known to the first infected host that would allow entry from this host. And for each discovered host, various attacks on Unix systems has happened like uh, cracking password file to use login or password to log on to the other systems and exploiting a bug in uh, the finger protocol and exploiting a bug into the sent email. Okay. If any of these three above succeeded, have a remote shell access, send bootstrap program to the compromised machine's operating system and the bootstrap program called back the parent program and downloaded the reminder of the worm to copy it over. So Maurice worm, uh, which contains various attacks for like a cracking password file, exploiting a bug, exploiting a bug in a sent email and in finger protocol, etc. Second type of worm is a cord red worm. It actually affects Microsoft Intex Server 2.0 and uh, it exploits non-buffer overflow. Um, actually, within 14 hours, it can infect third, um, and 3 lakh 60,000 servers. Initial version was released in July 13, 2001 and uh, it will send it like a HTTP request. So mainly the HTTP request exploits buffer overflow. Actually, it's a malicious code not stored in a file and it's placed in memory and then run. So it's actually a memory resident worm. When executed, it worm checks the file uh, uh, C uh, colon not worm. If the file exists, the worm thread goes into the infinite sleep state. And also it creates new threads to infect. So within 40, 14 hours, uh, it can affect actually 3,000 3, servers. The code red worm spreads via a buffer overflow in the Microsoft Internet Information Servers indexing services. So for that, uh, here infection begins by issuing an HTTP GET command. The worm probs random IP addresses to spread to other host. It then initiates a denial of, during a certain period of time, it only spreads. It then initiates a denial of service attack, DOS, and uh, against a government website by flooding the site with packets from in numerous hosts, etc. There is another version for uh, this code red worm that is code red 2 it is released in 2001 um, uh, here uh, it is actually different code base code red 2 is a variant that also targets microsoft iis but it also installs a backdoor or trapdoor allowing a hacker to remotely execute commands on victim computers it actually kills code red one okay next one we have a topological worm that is so I mean, topological worms are so called because the machines vulnerable to such a worm can be represented like a graph with nodes representing the vulnerable machines and edge between uh, machine a and machine b uh, if a knows or stores the address of b and is capable of directly infecting b by sending a malicious payload Actually, uh, these topological worms have a focus to targets. That means we can uh, represent all the vulnerable machines in a graph. The immediate targets are the neighboring uh, who in turn spread the infection to the neighbors and so on. Thus, the, the rate of spreading is potentially faster than internet scanning worms, which typically scan IP address space randomly incurring a uh, many futile uh, prob attempts. So the topological worm attack means uh, they are so-called because machines vulnerable to such a worm can be represented like a worm. Okay. Uh, that is each machine can be represented as a node and uh, an edge between two nodes uh, means a machine A and machine B exist if A knows or stores the address of B. Okay, so these are all about viruses and worms in detail. And what are the difference between viruses and worms? Uh, first one, uh, a computer virus needs a host, but a worm need, doesn't, doesn't need a host. It can run independently. Uh, viruses which requires the spreading of an infected host file. Worms are 
programs that replicate themselves uh, from system to system without the use of host file and spread with uniform sp speed as programmed in virus but worms can spread more rapidly than virus and uh, it can be attached to .exe, .com, .docs and .xls in virus but uh, it can be attached to any attachment of email or any file on the network in the case of uh, verb. Okay, so these are the main differences between viruses and worms. Okay, so these are all about virus and worms. Thank you.